Hello and welcome to Floyd Models Friday Roundup Show. Here we are with you on the 24th of March uh, 2023. Happy birthday, Mum. It's my mum's birthday today. So a big happy birthday to her. Anyway, I've uh, been a really, really busy week this week. Obviously still continuing on for doing the wash, doing the thick wash. We're getting that out to all the stockists. Happy to say that obviously serious models over in Greece, so if you're in the EU, they've got the wash in stock right now. Obviously Brett over at High Altitude Hobbies in the US, he's got the wash now and Hannah should hopefully have it by, I think, Monday. All right, so uh, the wash is going out. So I've been pumping that stuff through the machine uh, like a good one all week as well. So we've done thousands and thousands of bottles of that, but hopefully I think we're now on top of it so I can get back with a lot of the work down in here. As you can see, we've been pushing on really well with the said Tempest. Uh, it's a beautiful kit. It's a lovely little kit. And I must admit, you could do so much with this one. And it's quite nice working on things that are a little bit smaller. Having come off the back of last year, where everything was either 32nd or 24th scale, uh, it's really nice to be back down to this. So it's little things you don't think about, like how much paint you go through. So when I was doing like the big stuff, for instance, you go through a bottle of paint to do a 32nd scale aircraft. So like when we did like the F-15, you know, a couple of bottles of paint through with that one it gets quite expensive when you're working your way through it. And then you've got your aftermarket bits into them. Instead of them being, you know, maybe £20, they're all £30, £40 and things like that as well. So not only is it time, obviously these come together a little bit quicker because they're a bit smaller, but also the amount of product you're actually using on it and paint. So, you know, going back to doing something like this, because we used uh, a lot of... Um, AK real colors on it hardly used any paint whatsoever you're making out like quarter of a color cup and going through and still having a load left over so I'm tipping that back in the bottle and stuff but anyway it has been an absolutely great build on this one it's coming on very nicely and we'll have a look at it a little bit later on in the show so what do we got this week it all started on I can find my mouse there we go on Monday with Tempest uh, so again we were doing lots of work really getting it together you say this week we've really pushed on with it so again little nice touches love about this kit I love this because it's got the detail down in here um, Ed I've taken the time to actually do it so it's like a, a cutout and it just goes into it not only is this a great fit but also it means you don't ruin all of that gorgeous detail so it is very, very nicely thought out as well. And again, seam wise, as you can tell, hardly anything at all. So there's really, really no cleanup with this one. We haven't fitted the engine on. I'm just test fitting it in there to make sure it's all okay. And again, great detail just down in all the wheel wells. So we was getting all of those together. And generally just making our way through the entire thing, getting the wings together, adding the gun areas, things like that down into it, adding a little bit of photo etch, which obviously blanks off the areas we've cut away uh, to make way for the engine. Test fit in the wing section there and obviously the engine just to making sure they all go in. It is quite a snug fit to get that engine in there. So it does need a little bit of playing with just to get it through. Again, testing out the clear parts. They are a beautiful fit as well. Go in really nicely and then getting it all together. So there we go. Really, that's uh, part four was really getting it all together. So working on the wings, getting it all buttoned up, going through and get the tail planes on, so forth and so on. So that all went together very, very nicely down on there. Uh, me and Matt were on with you on by just mute that so you don't hear us wobbling on uh we were talking and going through for our, for our pm show or the filler mat show so really we were talking about uh paint and how matt has gone back to pretty much you know uh going through acrylics uh and a lot of true acrylics as well so we're not talking like the lacquer based ones or the alcohol based ones uh these are proper true acrylics and how he's getting on with those these days i sort of I'm in between. I'm a foot in both parties at the moment. I do love lacquers because they're just so easy to use. Um, but again, I, you know, there's a lot of reasons I can move away from it. Um, there's a lot. And it's not just the health reasons and that, because that's basically you should be wearing a mask uh, or definitely have some type of respirator on, an extractor, ideally, things like that with painting anything. But uh, yeah, lacquers are just a bit nasty, aren't they? They tend to eat things around. And when I got my hairdryer out to dry some uh, paint the other day, I noticed that it basically melted where obviously all the rubber coating where it's been attacked by the, the lacquer uh, just in the environment has made it all sticky and basically go horrible. So yeah, it just shows what it's doing to there and everything else in your environment. So I don't know. I'm not quite going back off of lacquers yet, but uh, I can definitely see me going more down the alcohol route. Anyway, we're answering your questions. It's live as well. So obviously you guys are chatting with us as we make our way through. It's around about an hour and 15 minutes on that one. So members, if you want to go off and see that and chatting about, well, obviously we're chatting about builds and projects and things like that as well. 
down on there. Uh, same day as well, we had the border models uh, review up for you for the actual uh, conning tower section or the midsection, if you like, of that Type 70 uh, U boat. And again, it is a absolute beast. It is gorgeously done. It, you know, putting it together, I don't think it's going to take too long at all. It's quite straightforward. Obviously, deck gun and flat gun a little bit more in depth, but generally getting it together isn't much. Again, this plinth down the bottom here that actually goes on the main sort of hull part is absolutely solid. I can understand where the money goes on this kit because that just to produce that one piece must cost quite a little bit of money because it is literally solid. It's like a brick. Um, and again, it's got the old grey matter going on this one because I do intend to build this. I really like the idea of it. Um, and I just want to do something a little bit sort of special with it. So I'm thinking maybe putting a little bit of a dock key on the side of it and then obviously scratch building some bits and pieces and then obviously maybe a vehicle on the dock side. I don't know. The, the grey matter is definitely sort of circling on this one. I'd like to have it a go. The kit itself looks very, very nice. And again, the railing system around the back here for that flat gun area you know, it's very, very fine. There's a little bit of bearing on it, as you can see. But again, great packaging to project it because that plastic bit that's in there, which actually weighs an absolute ton, uh, yeah, it, it's easy to destroy all the smaller parts down in there. So anyway, the full review is up with you right now. You can go up and see that one. It's in our review section. And of course, it's all over social media and things like that. Next up, obviously, we've got the PM show was up with you. <laughs> Sorry, we who's that uh obviously everything's going on at the pm store so that may be everything from obviously latest kit releases uh what we've got up on pre-orders our specials and various things like that as well so we're talking all different things down in there just over an hour and 10 minutes i think this show is as well so we we're just discussing everything going through on that and obviously all the latest releases uh and obviously all the latest pre-orders and things like that as well as answering your questions at the back of the show so plenty of stuff going on in there that is free to watch it's over are available via the site or obviously it's all over social media as well same time as doing that one i did the review for the a10 <sighs> again the instructions are horrible uh but actually you get under the skin of the kit it's really really nice and it's subtle things with this particular kit again it's got a beautiful mixture of raised and recessed details and again beautifully detailed as you can see here down underneath with a lot of you know recessed stuff there is a some mold lines even though this is slide molded and all the rest of it there is a few mar marks in there and stuff like that that you are still going to have to sand out so i don't think this is as straightforward and quite as easy as it could be because there is some bits down in there you can probably see these ones as well it runs right down the middle here but again the reality is that's a latch uh, and it could open up the doors but they decided to do it slide molding which was a little bit different than i was thinking they were going to do uh, but again, when you look at it, you just get under the skin of this one. And obviously the champion up to date has always been the Hobby Boss kit. It's a great kit, but this is just on a slightly different level. This thing's got a lot more finer detail. It's got a beautiful mixture of raised and rivet detail, as you expect right the way over this one. My biggest disappointment to this kit, to be honest, is it doesn't have the gun. And seeing as the aircraft was built around the gun, obviously from a modeling world they didn't bother with a gun all you do is get a barrel but again seats are very nice cockpit tubs a little bit basic uh, i'd like to see that sharper instrument panel is fantastic very sharp very nice all the way through and again you can have a look you can see through weapons loadouts a little bit mean as well i think with that kit but generally though i think until we see the great war hobbies one hopefully down the line soon that's going to be king of the sort of hill for it it's a really really nice one and if you wanted to do an a10c for 40 quid, I still think it's an absolute bargain kit. It's very, very nice, good price, and a really nice kit. And I think maybe a few little aftermarket bits in there, and you'll end up with something looking very, very special. Matt was back with us on Thursday. So we had his PM show up there as well. So he was talking about obviously everything he's getting up to at the moment. He's talking about his vehicles uh, and all the things like that. Uh, and just generally talking about how he's got on with the latest project, finishing this one off, talking about some of the other projects he's been working on. He's been using the new thick wash to do sort of mortar lines in walls and things like that with great success and uh, generally working around on a few of the older projects as well. So obviously he's working on this one and working with the olive drab. And again, it's a little bit of an old beast of a kit that one and he's trying to sort of nail it down and stuff but hopefully he'll do a fantastic job on that one and again if you can catch up with that one members it is up on the site right now and he's talking obviously about on this helicopter that we've been doing as part of the live show uh so again we were talking on that one as well so if you want to catch up with matt and everything he's been getting up to on there you can do just like that and that brings us up to today so up with you today is part five of the eddard uh, tempest bill 
Again, part five, really we're into primer with this one. So we're going through, we use an AK primer, just down onto this one, the old microfurler. We've done the old black hang out for the inside of the cockpit and the various things down in here. And then obviously getting that primer coat down onto this one and then coming in with the medium gray underneath. So we've got that one in and then we're sticking the ocean gray on top. And then we've got the top notch set. So I've used top notch uh, masks for this particular one. Again, great fan of their stuff. Works really, really well. Very simple to do. You know, just stick it down and away you go. So then obviously we've got the dark green going on after that as well. And that's turning out very, very nicely, as you can see there. And here, if it's going to work, there we go. There she is. So we are down to this. So I'm slightly ahead of you. The next part on Monday is going to be talking about doing, obviously, all the invasion stripes. So we've got, obviously, the sky band down the back, putting the invasion stripes. And again, I am not uh, a stickler for invasion stripes by any stretch of the imagination. You know me, I just tend to sort of, you know, they're in there, they're almost correct, and they'll be fine. They were never put on pin, you know, millimeter perfect on the real thing. So um, I obviously don't do it that way either. So basically, I just do the rule of 50. So it's 50 mil divided Divided by five, uh, divided by the five, gives you the 10. 10 mils right the way across here, that's good enough for me. And on the back, we just do the standard 45, so it's eight mil across on those ones as well. Again, I just make it sound probably very, very easy, but I just don't mess around with it. Very straightforward when you get going with it. So anyway, that one was on. We get the invasion stripes. You're going to be up with that one on Monday. Then we've obviously put the identification marks on the leading edges of these wings as well. We get those yellow ones in. And what this means is we are really, really pushing on nicely. So if I get some chance over the weekend, I'm going to actually get the decals onto this. There isn't a million of them, which is nice. Once we get those in, we'll seal those down under a nice satin coat. And then next week, we're going to be all into the weathering on this. Hope to get this one finished off by uh, Friday. Although I say I'm going to do a little bit of a base on it. So it might flip over a little bit as a side project doing that one. But again, it is a really, really nice kit. This is the weekend edition, 148 scale, Mark V. And again, it's just very nice. Obviously, aftermarket engine into this one, it's not actually glued in. It's just wedged in place at the moment to show you now, but it's coming along. But again, really nice touch with the upgrade, with the actual, uh, all the covers. We are going to have it on a nice little base, or that's the plan. We'll pop it down on a nice little base like this. Maybe some a little bit of ground equipment around it as if it's having some engine work done, things like that. Very reminiscent, if you remember, back to the, uh, obviously, the big brother to this one, uh, doing the 24th scale Airfix one, which we did a lot of scratch building on that. This one, I've taken a shortcut. I've gone aftermarket but it is really very nice and i say it's nice working on something that fits on me mat as opposed to everywhere else with it so that one's gone down very very nice indeed but anyway hopefully we'll get this one pushed along this week and then we'll be making our way through very nicely um, I did have all intentions of getting this thing up with you today. It's not quite ready yet. I've still got to finish off the editing, so chances are I'll probably be up with you early part of next week. But this is obviously the AH64E, the Guardian Apache. Um, again, we've sold a bucket load of these over at PM Store. I am a massive fan, as you don't know, of the old Apache. I fly it DCS is my ride uh, and everything, and I am. I just love it to bits. The obviously big news that came out yesterday is the AH1, which is the Westlands Apache, uh, which is basically like the D um, or an early D version of the actual uh, normal Apache. But obviously there is some subtle differences. There's some lumps and bumps. The biggest difference obviously you're going to get with the AH version of that kit when it gets released is obviously it's going to come through things like the CRV7 rockets, a couple of other little bits of sensors in there and stuff like that. But obviously, you know, I know that it caused a little bit of people chat on our forum, especially if people shoot me questions onto it. Don't forget, we've now just upgraded, as in the Army Air Corps, to the Guardian anyway, to the E version. So it's a little bit, if you want to do the old school one, but I think these ones have been coming down the line now, they're definitely operational as well, is the E version. And as it was explained to me, and I know it's all over social media, they are like night and day internally. Externally, there's not a lot of massive differences to it. There is some subtle ones, but really it's all to do with the firepower and you know the actual computers and sensors all on board with it. Apparently, it's like going from the abacus to a calculator it is that good or was it an iphone nokia 3310 right the way up to obviously an iphone 14 that's the way they describe it so again if you did want to do something like it then obviously you could still do the guardian if you want to do if you got that kit you could do it as a british one and no doubt the decals and all the aftermarket bits we pop popping along for this kit as well really excited about that one to be honest with you it's quite funny it's not often i can say i build all of these without a shadow of a doubt. And to be honest with you, I am going to do the uh, U-boat later on in the year, and I'm definitely going to be doing the Apache. And as I say, like I said before, I'm on a helicopter roll at the moment with everything going on, but that A-10 is really, really nice as well. Subtle, tiny details on that kit, and it's just what makes it a step up, definitely over the Hobby Boss one. And for 40 quid, 
obviously it's a no-brainer really really isn't anyway uh don't forget obviously we were talking about earlier the new wash and the bits and pieces are available as well. If you want to get yourself a thick wash, it's all down in there. Last of the sanders, I'll say this because I still get around about 30 emails a week saying what's happened to your sanders. We discontinued the sanders or manufacturing the sanders last year. This is just the remaining stocks. When they are gone, they are gone. So we've got 27 packs and 21 packs of that. That is it. I don't know what the other people have got uh, for our stockists. They might have some lying around if you want to find some of those. But we discontinued them purely because of the price increase. Cost of manufacturing has gone up by 200% in the last two years. So we we, we, uh, to be honest, we can't compete with nail files being sold by other modeling companies. So uh, I decided to pull out of the market. But anyway, we did bring out the wash as well because the wash is really, really good and excellent. And it's brilliant. So we got there. Obviously, we've got the new postage rates as well. Basically, EU and US, they start for around about a tenner upwards uh, on there. But they're nothing massively. Remember, the more you order, the more you save on postage. It's the way it actually works. But anyway, High Altitude Hobbies, they've got it now. Serious Hobbies, if you're in the EU, they've got the wash now, both in stock. Hannets will get theirs on Monday. Uh, that be off to them so i've no doubt how to have that up on their site in the next couple of days and obviously pm models they've got theirs as well so if you want to get that you can do right now talking to the pm store obviously they've got their new arrival section we covered this obviously a lot on uh, on the Wednesday show, but the first batch of uh, uh, Guardian helicopters we sold out of pretty much straight away. We got a new batch came in yesterday, so uh, if you do fancy getting one of those, again, it is an absolute stunning kit. Or you've got obviously this is the limited edition version, so you get the four decal options, same kit, just different decal options in that one down there. There's that lovely A10 at thirty nine ninety nine. It's an absolute bargain, and that oh Jesus, I. Have... I'm seeing you guys now build the uh, the sky crane, and I'm like, oh, I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. There's certain someone who knows who they are who messaged me on Facebook, and his looks absolutely stunning. So, um, yeah, no, very, very nice. Got some great builds of that coming along. Plus, I've had all the other ones down in here. The special section as well keep an eye on this this does change all the time as well so down in here we've got some of the dragon bits and pieces down in here as well we've got that gorgeous tamiya f35 as well really really nice and obviously all the others in our special section and last up not to forget obviously the damage box area so these ones have just had limited tiny little scuffs on the boxes things like that anything major we'll put a photo up and show you but i can assure you all the contents of the boxes are absolutely fine they're all a1 as well again restocks coming into obviously the pm store all the time We've had a load in this week, load of AK, uh, and obviously the book section as well. We've got new books coming down the line uh, as well with our new one, which is the Phantom. Uh, that one came in this week as well. So if you want to get yourself some reading material, maybe, then obviously they are up there as well. You can grab all of those anytime you like. And that is about it for this week. To be honest with you, I've got a plan for this weekend, and we will see next week if it actually comes off. But I am going to gut, and when I say gut, I'm going to absolutely rip the studio apart. As you know, I'm moving out of here in around about a year's time, if not before. So, but I'm getting really crammed in now with all the clutter and the bits and pieces. And I was looking at some photos of the studio from well, about ten years ago, and it when it was empty. And I quite like that look. So what I intend to do is just have a massive, massive gut job in here and try and tidy some of this up as well. Just give us a little bit more room, especially if we're going to do slightly bigger projects again and things like that. But again, we will be moving along with those very, very soon. As always on a Friday, I'm going to leave you with your great work from the gallery. So until Monday, everybody, happy modelling. Take care.
Listen for 